So, what, what, M A. I know they're metallic parts. So why am I not seeing M A? Well, that's part A. So is M A part of? Oh, right. Yeah. Um, what do you say? Uh, realization dawns. M A metallic part of M for metallic A metallic A. Uh, I guess. But looking at it, these are the parts that I want. Uh, I can see in in there the um, side rails, so the. Um, suspension stays as they call them and one or two other things so I can actually just look through the bag uh, yeah I can, I can see some of the uh, the bolt things that I'm looking for so that's the pack I'm after so I will open this uh, reasonably carefully. Ooh, now then. This is where I could do with lots of pots. When I built the Scania, I had some small boxes into which I could put like all this, this lot all in one box with the label. It's important you keep the label with it because otherwise if you lose the label, you no longer know that that's bag A and it then would become a real pain um, and once you open something like that there's, there's they're kind of I need parts B, C as well oh, I'm gonna I'm not fantastically prepared for this I say I thought I was going to do something different, so I kind of didn't think about uh, or even remember about all the little nuances of doing this stuff. Um, yeah, I am concerned. I am concerned that I get. Hmm. I don't know what I can do. What I can do is this. Useful when you sell jewellery and things. I've got some um, bags like that that I can use. So I can now open these and then put that in there. Now I will open these in such a way that I don't rip the labels. Again, I'm partly being neat, but um, these are complex kits there is a lot of parts uh, you know ripping you could rip this off then um, you then have to start and do things like write little tiny bits of paper or something um, just so that you don't lose what was in where And it was and it is going to be um, it's fun making these things but it is going to you know you are gonna you do have to sort of concentrate shall we say and um, take take into account quite a few of these things like you know remembering that that and I'll do it now before I forget you don't want to throw that away. You, you don't want to know that that is baggy. Um, otherwise, as I say, trying to sort of sort it out afterwards. You can do it. I mean, all the parts are there. Uh, and uh, as long as you're really careful, you can um, 
always just spend time going through matching against because you get little diagrams on the page uh, as to what they are these are usually to scale as well although certainly at the back there's a scale um, so you can tell but you know you've got all the lens and things like 10 millimeter long 16 millimeter long so you can also measure them as well just excuse me a second I'm just going off camera just needed to, um, I'm running a different process of doing something in the background whilst I'm broadcasting and I just needed to tell it to carry on with the next step of what it was doing. Um, so it looks like we need two parts out of there which would be those two. And interestingly, if we go just to sort of illustrate this, I go into the back here. We have a complete sort of parts list of things. So if I go looking for um, the metal parts, uh, metal part A here, um, MA1, etc. You've got a list of um, what's actually in the um, in the bag uh, and in the kit. So, um, if I were to look at this here, for example, the, the the particular captive nuts that I'm looking for, it tells me there are only two pest nuts, and the, the two of them are in here. Uh, so I know that that's the uh, the right thing. Interestingly, oh yeah, and then there's uh, a continuation on there. So you know, if if you're looking for them, you see those. I can look here. It says there is only two, so it has to be those two I'm after. It, it sometimes is a useful thing, but as I say, you've got here, for example, the, the particular size screws. It tells you how long they are. The 2.6 by 6, 16 millimeters. So you know. With a, with a ruler you can measure them, so if you're not quite sure you got hold of the right ones, then uh, you can check them. So again, what I'm going to do here is be careful about opening this. I don't really want everything spilling out. So if I can, I'm just going to you know, just make a small um, cut at the top and just tip the two things out that I want. Uh, as there is only a small hole, then there is less chance of everything else coming out of this bag and spilling somewhere or getting lost. And what I'm also going to need out of here are uh, two washers, two MA12 washers, okay, which are not in that bag. Not quite why they would be. <laughs> They're going to be in another bag, which is this one. And it looks like there is only two. I will again. I can confirm that again. It's uh, it gets easier as you get on, and there's less and less parts. It becomes easier to be sure that you've got the right ones. Now, for something, it possibly doesn't matter too much for a couple of washers. I mean, I can go get some more. Yeah, there is only two, MA12, there's only two of them. It happens to be the two which are in this bag. Quite why they're not in the same bag. Hmm, anybody's guess. Um, but I do like, yeah, there will be some things um, which are not interchangeable. Yeah, you've got to, the, the, the screws, for example, the, you know, 
you could mix two up and it would be okay to have the wrong one in the first place but then the the screw that you've used and doesn't go there you may not be able to use a substitute where it's supposed to go so you know you first you put in the wrong thing in the place it probably wouldn't be a problem but then um, when you come to try and uh, uh, put something where that screw or whatever was supposed to go you'll find it doesn't and it's a bit like that with the gearboxes you, you can you can put the wrong thing in the wrong place in fact you can completely swap things around but it just doesn't work properly you can build a gearbox completely wrong and it won't work it'll spin and, and things like that but it just won't work Actually, there's some spare washers in there, which is kind of amazing. Uh, and now I want to be a five, which are going to be in here. He says, thinking, will they really be in there? Or is that another bit out of the A bag? Uh, no, they're all labelled MA. So it does look like it is really... Yeah, they're all labelled MA. So it really is a BA. So where's... This manual, by the way, is 35 pages. So BA, and it's BA5. Which are the middle-sized ones in the bag? So this bag has uh, screws and nuts in it. We're looking for the middle sized screws. There's a long one, a short one and a middle one. So I don't necessarily have to measure it. I just need to be able to tell them apart. And I want two of them. And um, I only use them temporarily. <laughs> Come on, open up. Thank you. Yeah, it looks like whoever was watching has got bored with the slow pace. Well, it's a slow thing to build, I'm afraid. Whoever you were, you could have said hello. Ask questions if you like. Let's get another bag out. that time already okay so I'll put that in there uh, so the middle sized ones uh, okay I'm just looking I can see what the short ones look like and I can stay see what the long ones look like so I've got an indication of the size of the things that I'm after which is that size there when I come to using a lot of these, rather than just the one or two, um, I will actually sort of just open the, the bag. I think that's a short one. Medium one, it is. He says looking, wondering if the one I've just got out is medium as well. Yeah, there. If you ever want to seed length of two screws if you just sort of put them uh, in nose to tail like that you can tell if they're the same size it's hard sometimes if you're trying to do it that way to get them sort of aligned and see but I'll just put those screws over there so I know what those are I'm going to put those over there so I know what those are uh, and so what we do with these is get a screwdriver out I was about to say, I'm half prepared, because here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> uh, it's got the wrong end in it, yep. But luckily, I have a screwdriver kit. Pays to use the right sized screwdriver. I think, is that the right one? 
Yeah, yeah that's not there. I bet it's that one. No, it's not. Okay. It is the right one. Phillips and Posi Drive, and sometimes the one's better than the other, even in the, in the wrong. Sometimes, it, sometimes it's better to use a Phillips screen and Posi Drive sc screwdriver, and vice versa, just because of calls. So I put that on the, through there, and I find the first pressed nut. And this sometimes is where it can get fiddly. He says, thinking, pliers, time for pliers. When you make jewellery in chainmail, you have some nice pliers around the place. So that wants to go that way and needs to go on there, which I can then hold in place and just screw up. So that's what I'm doing is going to tighten this up. As I tighten it up, the, the, the metal screw, metal captive screw I'm holding there will now pull its way into the plastic. So it's just pressed itself into place. Now, when I undo that, it should leave the the nut in place, which is what it's done. In fact, I didn't really need to get two of those in. So that's pressed in place, doesn't fall out. And we'll do the same thing again on the other side. I might as well use the same screw. So I needn't have got two out. Again. Pliers there just to put it in the right place. Screw this up. Now I need to, I do need to hold the um, the nut until this has uh, got to the tighten, tightening point. What will now happen is that will just pull in. It's, it's about a quarter or half a turn. That's all it needs just to. Uh, it in. Uh, don't want to keep cranking it because what, what you will do is you will strip, you will eventually cause the, the nut here to, to spin and then it will strip the um, plastic, uh, the teeth that's around the around the nut that presses in it will just literally strip the plastic and then it'll just spin around. You can get around that because you just put a little drop of sea air glue uh, in uh, alongside it if you need if it ever happens um, and it will then uh, bond ideally you take your screw out before you drop the CA in just because it can wick down and onto the onto the bolt and then it won't come out at all so I don't actually need that and that anymore at least not yet so the instructions that are here uh, indicate how to um, put the press nut in place. So you screw it into place, take the screw back out. So that's what we're going to do and we're going to put those two back in this bag. Actually I'm not going to put them back in that bag, I'm going to put them back in this bag. Drop them into there. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure I need them again for this particular step, but rather than lose track of them, I'm going to do that. Then I know where they are. That's that part done. First part. Right, next part is C20, which is this part here. And again, we'll cut that off.
you can. You can, you could use a scalpel, but the cutters are a lot easier and a lot cleaner actually than the scalpel can be. Plus the scalpel is sharp. Mm, fingers, scalpels, try and keep the two as separate as much as possible. The cutter therefore is a lot um, safer, it's actually a lot easier and quicker to use as well. You can get, I mean the cutter, um, good quality cutter, you can get a very sort of clean cut from it. Um, there's virtually no sharp edges on that, I am just uh, tidying up, I'm not using any force. You can see where it was, that you can't avoid, but um, uh, the cutter uh, does a real good job. Now I want to, uh, two metal pieces from uh, Metal Kit D, I think it is. I'm kind of surprised it didn't sort of show, but metal kit, is, oh well, it could be a plastic bit. D. It could be a plastic part. Uh, a, B, C, D. It's not a metal part. Okay. Yeah, part D, it's a plastic part. Okay, and the, the tree I'm looking for looks like that. Tree, what the tree looks like, <laughs> finding it, is another matter. That's Q. Uh, that's B, that's not it. Um, that does not look like it. And I can't see the parts on there anyway. Oh, <laughs> you know why I can't find it? I can't find it because I left it on the desk, didn't I? Oh, there we go. So it's these two parts here, I'm guessing D1, uh, D1, D2 and D3, that's these two here. Again, we'll just snip those off. Assuming I can get the cutters in. One of them. If you weren't here earlier, always use cutters. Don't don't bend the parts off. You always get you always if you start trying to bend them off then um, and fatigue the plastic. You always get a bad uh, edge on it. And sometimes you can uh, with some some of the pieces if they're more fragile than these, you can actually cause the piece to to be damaged as well. Near there, and just file the sharp edge. Not really a problem, this I know is going to go inside uh, a piece of metal, so you're not going to be able to come in contact with it. That one you might a little bit, but again, you, you, you know, it depends on how conscientious you want to be, as I mentioned earlier. You know, this sort of thing, it's not, it, it's not critical. Uh, it's you. It's often the bits that you don't really see anyway, um, except in sort of abstract. You know, you're looking at it from that far away. Um, you, you know, you're not seeing the the slight marking of anything that's on there that's come from where it was sat on the uh, fastened to the tree. So it kind of doesn't matter. 
you know, it's one of these things that you're making it, you know what's there and what's not there. Although I must admit, you forget really quickly. I couldn't tell you. The Scania now is a few years old, and I could not tell you whether it's got any of these bits on it or not. You know, that stick out like this, where I haven't bothered to file them down or what have you. Sometimes if you use a knife, actually, um, scalpel, to clean some of these up, you do sometimes get a cleaner edge. I'm not sure I um, can, uh, can do it. Just because if you use a scalpel and, sl uh, and slice it, it just, um, it's a different, it's a different way of the plastic separating and, uh, than, than with, the, uh, with the cutters. And it sometimes will leave you with a shiny piece, especially if you've got shiny metal around it, but yeah. Shiny plastic around it, should I say. I mean, if you really want it to, uh, to get this pedantic, what you'd probably do is to uh, you know, do all this, file it all down very nicely, um, then you know, rub all the shiny gloss off, uh, put a primer coat on and paint it. Because uh, this is intended to represent metal, shiny metal, so it's not. The only time it, things like that sometimes become critical is like if it was on the edge here. I know this is going to fit into a piece of metal, so if these two, this is oversized slightly, it won't go in or it'll be too tight. Then you might have to file down, but I know this bit here that I'm filing now will actually be hidden inside a piece of metal. So I'm kind of wasting my time. But whilst I am kind of wasting my time, I'm making the choice. I mean, one of the reasons why is if I do this automatically, then in places where it does matter, I won't forget to do it. So this, uh, when I find the right way of doing it, that's going to that's going to be that way. That's going to that's going to. That's that side, that's this side, so that's going to mount in there, like that. I think that's the wrong way. Maybe it's going to mount that way, it is. You see, I hadn't realised that, but this this piece here could go that way, it can go that way. You know, we, you might not necessarily realise, even, and I didn't, that they are, um, they're actually different, it's a different shape. But when I put this onto here like uh, this, the screw I wanted to get it to go through, the screw hole didn't match up, and there's this bit sticking out, and this doesn't look right, which is why I flipped it over and did that, and now the screw hole lines up, there's nothing sticking out, and when I actually look at it, the bottom end is flat, this end is at an angle which matches that. <laughs> so it's kind of obvious after the fact that that does that. So now I want um, BC3. So I need another metal part. This one. And I'm betting these are all the same. Oh no they're not, there's two different things in here as well. So BC3 is a self-tapping screw, I think. BC1, BC, MA9. Right, it's not telling me. Oh, BC1. Ah, dear. So BC1 is the self-tapping. So uh, what th they actually are quite clever when they do this, because in this kit, there's two different in this pack here there's two different types of screws now you you possibly can't tell the difference on the camera but they are completely different one's a self-tapping screw and one isn't uh, so one has a coarse thread and one doesn't so you can relative, relatively easy